Welcome back to the Five Fantasy League show. Me and Liv back in the studio. Our teams met last week. United versus Chelsea. And we haven't actually spoken about I it, know. have we? I mean, you're a bad fan. Seen, you didn't watch it. So I actually didn't watch it. I was the in the game. crowd at Stamford Bridge. What did you think? Um, I thought it's hard to take given the way you, we conceded in literally the last minute, having gone one up with about seven minutes to go. Also, what a header, by I the know, way. Like, unbelievable. Um, I still don't know how he snuck into. If you follow this man on TikTok, Casemiro's played about three games for Man United this season, albeit he's been good in every one. And he snuck into this Chelsea Man United all time. Like, 11. Sorry I didn't put Jorginho and Loftus-Cheek in there. No. Did Kovacic make it? No. <laughs> Head loss, uh, absolute head <laughs> loss. But no, the way we conceded um, was hard to take. But actually, when you look at the game as a whole, mm. I think a draw was a fair result because we could have been two 0 down at half time. Yeah, and you should have taken advantage. I think we definitely should have. Uh, but talking of hard to take, fantasy football last week. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! The benches. Should we? Should we first? Should we have a look at our teams? We should. So I think I got around 53 for... Why are you laughing? You haven't I'm even not. Bailed out by Harlem <laughs> together, aren't you? Literally. Bailed out by Harlem together. When again. I look at the rest of my team and just like literally Mitrovic, James Justin and Haaland. Um, but just for just for context... Talk us through this bit of decision yeah, making. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so just for context, I actually decided to take out Harry Kane and take out Anthony Gordon, who's done absolutely nothing for me. Harry Kane. <laughs> and replace him with... <laughs> Harry Kane has gone every week and I just basically <laughs> fell into the hype of Mohamed Salah. Um, and Anthony Gordon's been doing nothing. Obviously, when I take him out, he gets like eight points. Harry Kane scores, gets like eight points. And I put in Salah and um, Jesus. However, is it a good decision going forward? Arsenal have got Nottingham Forest at home. Salah has got Leeds at home. So maybe this week I might get back those points. My bench is obviously so hard to take. But I was always going to bench Trossard against Man City. Like that wasn't even, that didn't even come into my thinking, to be honest. However, Brutal, I am never, ever benching Andreas again. Ever. Right. And Danny Ward, so frustrating because did I want to double up on the Leicester defence? Absolutely not. But I doubled up on Newcastle and they conceded. And Danny Ward got eight points. Danny Ward's got four clean sheets in the last five games. Uh, but they've got City next. I know. So he'll be staying on my bench. But you think my bench was bad? Should we have a look at your bench? All right. So as you can see, my bench. I'm sorry. Also horrifying. Just 34 points on your bench. Yeah. Are you joking? Just so bad. That is honestly. poor. It's poor management. It's so That's sickening. poor management. Although all of my front three contributing yet again. Callum Wilson. But what a finish honest, that was against Tottenham, by the way. Yes, very good. And also, when you, when you look at that back four. You're not going to be playing Nico Williams, who's got Liverpool, over any of those back that back four. So I don't think... There are some serious decisions to be made this week, though, particularly with Andy Robertson and Perisic, who just isn't doing the business for me. But we are going to come on to this week uh, because there's lots of decisions to be made, including whether or not to bring in Darwin Nunes. So this is what's so frustrating on my part, because last week... I, we were talking about it, weren't we? We were talking about it. And I was so adamant that if Darwin Nunes was fit, I was bringing him in over Salah. And I wouldn't have even thought twice about it because he was very, he's been very involved when he has been playing. And he just looks quite dangerous in the box. You know, he had a... What, let's go on his, um, his history. It was in that, in that West Ham game, wasn't it? Where he hit the post, yeah. made the keeper make a couple of really good saves. But obviously he then missed the forest win and that's when I that the Forest defeat sorry and that's when I bought Salah in now I've got to stick with Salah I have to for Leeds at home I have to I absolutely have to obviously scored again in the Champions League mm. as did Darwin they still weren't great though no, they Ajax. should have they should have been 3-0 down at half time mm. but, uh, but our Ajax just could not fit and they when I tell you like if you didn't watch the game they had two of the clearest cut chances they did. Yeah, you're right. and you they just hit them straight one of them hit the post one of them hit straight I think Trent blocked it but it was basically straight down yeah, Alice's throat anyway um but if I didn't have any Liverpool like attack it, uh, attacking players, any of their assets, eight point eight million, I mm. would I would be so tempted. It's the most by Darwin Nunes week, and and look it? at those fixtures as well. It's the most tempting fixture of the week, I think. At Liverpool at home to Leeds, who are obviously in a total downward spiral. No wins in the last eight games. Jesse Marsh on the verge of being sacked, yeah. you would think. Um, and the fans are making it pretty clear, aren't the they? The fans they absolutely not happy with the performances in the stadium and. My issue comes back to basically, I just don't trust this Liverpool yeah. team this season. Like any other season, you'd be looking at this fixture and thinking, Captain you, Salah, yeah. Darwin's in the side, yeah. Trent, Trent assists, but 
you probably would have said the same going away to Forest, who are like the basement boys of the Premier League, couldn't win a home game and then turn Liverpool over. Mohamed Salah completes four passes in 90 minutes or yeah. however long he was on the field. Virgil van Dijk misses three open goals. <coughs> I like, yeah. I don't know. I just, I I've, don't know. I, I feel like I would bottle it bringing Darwin in and I can't you? sanction bringing him in over Kane, Wilson or Haaland. Yeah, I mean, we said last week because you were like, I'm not bringing Darwin in, but then you sort of, almost that like came round to the idea a little mm. bit but having watched Liverpool over the last two games everyone I basically fell into the trap that you, you, you're you not going to fall into and that was everyone bought in Salah for that Forest game even the West Ham game and obviously the West Ham game yeah he did score didn't he oh, did, yeah he did I think Mohamed Salah did score in that game um, but oh, no, no he didn't, didn't. No, he scored, in the, he scored in the City game didn't he so those two games he's got two back to back blanks when I tell you I'm giving Mohamed Salah leads at home, but what I would do, because Liverpool are always going to be dangerous, right? Mm. They, are, they are at some point going to get back to the Liverpool that we know, I, I assume, right? You would think. Anyway, with that run of fixtures, if they don't, then something's seriously gone wrong, I think. But if, if, Dar if, if, Salah, does, if Salah blanks against Leeds, I would be tempted to take him out and put in Darwin and then like have another midfielder. Yeah, it's the same for me and Andy Robertson at the back. Like, I bought Andy Robertson in as a replacement for Reese James, but he's just become a rotation risk with Gostas Simakas in the side. And like we've said already, this is like the most obvious point scoring fixture of the weekend, but I'm still considering taking Andy Robertson mm. out of the team. Um, I've got two free transfers available this week. Yeah. And I feel like, like I said earlier, Robertson and Perisic are the ones I kind of want to bin. I also am very tempted to bin Wilfred Zaha. Uh, it just hasn't happened. It hasn't, but again, another another good fixture. Southampton at I home. Know. I will be at that game, so I'll let you know how he plays. But um, I think that's a good fixture to keep in. Yeah. I think whilst he's still got a good fixture, it's probably worth just holding on for a, for this game. And then you've you've given him a couple of good fixtures, and then you think actually no, it's time to get rid. But again, he's he's around that price where you can go I for. Know. You've got a lot of options around that eight million pound price tag. So maybe hold off for Wolf Zaha. But let us know what you're going to do with your Liverpool assets. If you've still got Liverpool defenders, if you've got Mo Salah, are you going to look to get Darwin Nunes? Let us know in the comments because I am this close to transferring Mohamed Salah out. We spoke briefly about him earlier, taking a point off of Chelsea last week with that should've last been, been three. Casemiro goal. Yeah, potentially should have been free. And the weekend's maybe biggest fixture, Manchester United hosting West Ham. What do we think about this one, Liv? Obviously, Marcus Rashford is a potential asset here again. Yeah, I think Rashford is is appealing when it comes to the Man United attack. My issue with and the last like how many weeks have been we've been sat here saying your conversion rate is so bad. So bad. And the problem is with Marcus Charles Rashford. Is so many chances. Anthony, I think oh. he's the most left footed player I've ever seen in my oh. life. He had such an easy chance on his right foot. Genuinely, I was down that end and I thought he'd gone in. I know. Uh, but it was so poor. And with the Man United attackers, this is the problem: is that you're creating all the chances, but. Fernandez and Eriksen aren't going to be Casemiro aren't going to be getting any points if no one can put the ball in the back yeah. of the net, and that is a real issue with Man United. And it's such a it's such a difficult situation because it's like Rashford was so you 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 know Rashford sometimes you know put your foot through it, but we've seen Rashford you know be really composed mm -hmm. in situations and and calmly place it into the bottom corner. We're not seeing him do that anymore, and it's like if you give Never. Ronaldo those chances. Does he score them? Yes. But if Ronaldo's on the pitch, is he in those positions to get those chances, if that makes sense? I think two of the better assets for Manchester United are actually Dallow and Shaw at fullback. I think at 4.6, 4.7 million, they are really cost-effective fullback options. Dallow on especially, this I think. Yeah, I mean, Diego Dallow's created the second most chance in the Manchester United squad behind Bruno Fernandes this season. I think Luke Shaw as well, since he experienced that drop uh, in form and was kicked out of the side and, and replaced by Malassia. Since he's come back, he looks way better. And it's not mm. the first time we've seen Luke Shaw do this in his career either. When Alex Telles first arrived at the club, just needs some competition. He suddenly mm. skyrockets in form, and I think competition brings the best out of Luke Shaw, and that's what you're seeing now. So I would say that two of the most appealing assets are actually Diogo Dalot and Luke Shaw this season. I think a lot of people are going to be moving for Dalot over. over I think over Luke Shaw, yeah. um, it just feels like, and I, we said this last week, like it doesn't feel like he's got one assist, but obviously he's got four clean sheets in there as well. Yeah. Um, two returns in his last in his last three games. And again, what we mentioned last week on the show was that run of fixtures. Yeah. Now, I actually don't have 
any Man United players in my team. Neither do I. However, if I'm going to go for one, it's going to be him. Yeah. He's going to be my priority if I'm going for any Manchester United player. And then maybe a Marcus Rashford if I want to downgrade Salah and, and then put Darwin Nunes in. So there is options there. Mm. Um, but I think it does look like if you can put the ball in the back of the net, there's chances there. There's yeah, real absolutely. chances there with Man United assets. And you mentioned the fixtures there for Manchester United. I think it's one to focus on because United in the first 11 games have played nine of the top 11 teams. Mm. So they've played some really tough fixtures early doors. And now United are going to go on a run where can they break apart the teams that classically they've struggled to break yeah, apart? Like United look at their best when they're in transition over the last few mm. seasons. But in the last two or three games against you in the first 35 minutes, against Tottenham in the entirety mm. of the game, really, there was a definite different way of playing yeah. under Manchester United. It was dominating the ball, it was pressing them quite high, it was winning the ball back in the final third. There is going to be a problem now that Rafa Varane has got a long-term injury, you would think, with pushing a little bit higher at the pitch because his athleticism gets United out of a lot of problems. Mm. But I still think this run of fixtures is one to target. So if you're going to get Man United assets in, get them in now. Who, if you had to pick... So we, we, are we both saying Dallow's probably the best I w- option? I'm actually going to go Luke Shaw, I think. Are I you? think I'm going to go Luke Shaw. Why, yeah. because he's bought more of a differential? Because uh, he said... So Dallow's in 10% of teams. Luke Shaw's in 0.9% of teams. Yeah. But then, I suppose, back-to-back... I just think that Luke Shaw... Oh, he got the assist, didn't he, against Chelsea? Yeah, and well. I just think when I watched Great Luke Shaw, in. even against Tottenham, nearly scored, that produced that amazing save out of Hugo Lloris. I think he's the slightly more attacking threat of the two. I think Diogo Dallas having a really good season, and like I said earlier, it creates an awful lot of chances, but I think Luke Shaw, across the course of 90 minutes, is more likely to create a massive chance, mm. whereas Diogo Dallas, like, slipping the ball into midfield where people are shooting, Luke Shaw's at the byline crossing back, so I think that I would probably lean towards Luke Shaw. And what about in midfield or attack? If you had to pick one player? I mean, it's got to be Marcus Rashford, Rashford, Rashford in terms Rashford. of midfielders because he's actually can playing someone as just, an out-and-out striker. Can someone just tell him, how, can, can, can he get Thierry or can you get Thierry Henry down to your training ground and just show Marcus Rashford how to place the ball in the corner? He played for, played for three seasons under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's like one of the most notorious finishers I in just don't, Premier but we've history. But so. we've seen Marcus Rashford do it so many times. It's just because his confidence is... Is shot maybe, and he then wants. So he's just trying to think. I think United are going to. What is it then? United are going to start finding the net soon, and he just once one goes in, there's going to be a bucket load going. Mm. What about West Ham then? The team they're facing. Well, interestingly, so I was at um, the West Ham Bournemouth game on Monday night, and when when uh, West Ham got the penalty, I was thinking, oh god, and then and then literally, I was like, is Jared Bowen going to take this? And then my my friend who was sat next to me was like, he's off the pitch. I was like, thank God for that. But Jared Bowen did come out and say, I'm off penalties now after that did miss. He? Yes. However, did he say that's you? No, he didn't say oh. it to me, sadly. It wasn't my interview. But apparently he did. He was obviously off the pitch when they got the penalty, hence yeah. why Ben Rama stepped up. But what a penalty it was from Ben was Rama. Crazy, Although yeah. he doesn't play every single week, does he, Saeed no. Ben Rama? He's a rotation risk. He like is. The likes of Fornals. But then Bowen off pens, does that make him slightly less appealing? Um, not really for me. I still think Bowen is... Uh, is a solid, solid asset. I think his link up with Skamaka is getting better and better. And Skamaka is a player I'm really interested in. He looks so dangerous. He looks a little, he's got a bit of the Darwin Nunes about him, a bit chaotic, yeah. but like seems to get shots off from really good locations, hits the target an awful lot. And I think their connection is going to be really vital for West Ham's success going forward. So I, I'm three probably bl- going to stick with Jared Bowen. Three blanks in a row. It is three blanks in a row, isn't it? But Three blanks in a row with Man United, but then you look at those two home fixtures, Crystal Palace and Leicester. Yeah, and even Man United. That's not like a four, is it? So like on Man United, West Ham at home is like a green two. That's a really tough game. Yeah. Chelsea, I mean, we're very, very lucky to get three points off West Ham. Mm. A dodgy VAR decision went our way. Um, but that's a tough game. Yeah, and also I look at Jared Bowen and I think the options to replace him, you know, James Madison's got some really tough fixtures, Manchester City involved. The other option... We've already spoken about Bukayo Saka potentially. Ooh, maybe. I think Bukayo Saka at a similar sort mm. of price point. A lot of people have already bad. got three Arsenal assets, though. A lot of people have got Saliba or Ramsdale. A lot of people have got Martinelli because of his price, and a lot of yeah. people have got Jesus. I think I've only got one Arsenal asset, and that's Martinelli. So I'm considering bringing in um, Bukayo Saka for Jared Bowen because they've obviously got Forrest at home. Forrest at home is almost we as good as Leeds at home. We say this. We say this. Obviously, I know... It, Nottingham Forest away are a very different size Nottingham Forest at home but we did look at that Forest at home fixture Forest away fixture for Liverpool and think oh that's easy I still don't think it's as good a fixture as Leeds but 
close. I think it's really close, yeah. And and the Emirates has been rocking this year, so I'm probably going to bring Bukayo Saka in for Jared Bowen and then Luke Shaw in for either Perisic or Robertson. Moving on to Manchester City and some captain's chat in here as well because right. as you can see, alert. Erling Haaland has a little yellow oh. alert. 75% <laughs> chance of playing. Of course, he was taken off at half-time against Borussia Dortmund midweek. Pre-game as well, Pep Guardiola was talking about him experiencing some flu-like symptoms. As well as Jao Cancelo. Who also had the same symptoms. And they are two players that 90% of FPL managers, I'm sure, will have both of them in their teams. 55 and 83, actually. That is, whatever. So. You get my drift. They're very popular FPL players. Yeah. But that, like, genuinely, this ruins my team because I don't like my bench. It means I'm going to have to play Trossard against Chelsea oh. and oh, someone else against another good team. But I think a lot of people will now be considering, with Haaland on a yellow and Salah playing Leeds at home and Jesus playing Forest at home. Do I captain either Jesus or Salah ahead of Haaland? The, I think this is the week where your vice captain is probably going to be more important than ever because everyone's known for the last 10 game weeks that you put the captaincy on Haaland and he's going to play. Whereas there is a risk and we, everyone that plays FPL knows exactly what Pep Roulette is. And if there is a slight chance that... People have experienced that with Foden last week. Oh, dropped, oh yeah, exactly. Loads of people went trust Trans- Foden. Yeah, a lot of people transferred in Phil Foden. You cannot trust Pep Guardiola. And I know we, yeah, we know he wants Haaland to go and get the golden boot. I think he's pretty much won it already to be perfectly honest but um, he might not play oh I don't they've got cha- they, I know they're already through in the Champions League they've got Champions League fixture next week as well mm. but if your captaincy is, are you going to captain Haaland I'm going to captain Haaland and so. who's your vice captain going to be <sighs> maybe Bukayo Saka if I bring him into the side either him or a Liverpool asset which I currently don't own so unless I somehow squeeze a Liverpool asset into my side how many free transfers have you got two okay so you could even do a minus four and and, because you said yeah you wanted to take out you want to take out Robertson potentially take out Perisic and Bowen maybe Bowen and then you want to get a Liverpool asset in there so you're going to have to do a little mini I'm going to have to do some serious work but I'll probably stick with Erling Haaland you sticking with Haaland yeah I think I can't justify taking it off him when we don't know I'm what I think what we'd advise everyone to do is listen to Pep Guardiola's press conference he'll probably give absolutely nothing away He but it is worth listening to that just to see if he does confirm whether Haaland's going to play. He'll probably say, oh, he'll face a late fitness test, as they always do. Yeah. But my captaincy will be on Erling Haaland. And then my vice is so difficult because I have got both Mohamed Salah and Gabriel Jesus, two of possibly, I think two of You're in for a good week, the best you? fixtures yeah. you could have. Forest at home, Leeds at home, are but probably the, the two best, best fixtures yeah. you could ever have. Um, but it's whether... Jesus is out of form. I don't I don't care what people say. Mm. Jesus is out of form. Darwin has actually scored more goals than him now this season, which I think is absolutely remarkable considering everyone was talking that about is crazy. considering like obviously having watched Arsenal and Jesus, you know the impact he's having, yet Darwin when he's played has been more effective. Yeah. So it's quite a weird one. I'm keeping Jesus. He's obviously one away from a yellow, from a, one yellow card away from a suspension as well. So mm. that's risky. But for this game week, I've got a big decision to make. Who to, who to vice captain, Yeah, Salah or Jesus. But guys, you're going to have to let us know mm. what you are going to do because this could be potentially... This is a huge week. It feels like a huge it week. It feels like a huge week. Are you going to captain Erling Haaland or are you going to go bold and just assume he's not going to play and perhaps go captain at Mohamed Salah or anyone else? You can, let mm. us know in the let comments who you are going to captain. All right, so that's it for another week of Fantasy Football Show. Uh, what time is the game week this week? So the deadline is 11 o'clock on Saturday morning, an hour and a half, of course, before Leicester versus Man City oh. kick off. And that is the thing. Are you going to captain someone in the early game? Yeah. Because that is also another thing that I comes am. into your mind. You are. I think everyone is going to captain Erling Haaland. But if you're not, let us know who your vice captain is on um, because this could be very important. Good luck and we'll see you all next week. <laughs>